We would be honored if you would join us. Hey, Star Wars fans and action figure collectors, got another Black Series review for you today. We've got the Pike Soldier from the Book of Boba Fett wave. This is number seven in the sort of Boba Fett Book of Boba Fett subline. First time we've, second time we've seen a Pike in action figure form. This first being uh, Quay Tolsite, part of Solo. It's a cool looking figure. Little bio on the back here says, During the Clone Wars, the Pikes became the galaxy's preeminent spice dealers, funneling illicit substances to Coruscant's crime families. After Jabba the Hutt's death, they expanded their spice trade to encompass Tatooine. It's a nice looking figure. This is one I wouldn't mind getting a second one of at some point. Just for the alternatives of display, you can take the mask off, I believe. We'll find out when we bust it open, so let's do exactly that and check out the figure. Alright, we've got the Pike Soldier out of the packaging here. And yeah, I, I really dig this figure. I think this is a nice, nice addition. Um, apparently what I'd seen online was uh, were actually customs where someone's done a separate head sculpt with the maskless uh, Pike look. Um, so I, I admit, I think not realising that before I opened the figure, I was kind of a little bit bummed out, but I've accepted it is what it is. And, uh, you know, if I really want to change up another Pike Soldier, I can go and buy those custom heads if I really, really want to. But that's fine. Um, Accessory-wise, does come with this blaster pistol, which is actually a part of... We've seen this before. This is part of Cassian Andor's sort of buildable rifle that he came with, the Rogue One figure. Um, you can sort of see with the number two, the stock fit onto the back, and then the, the, front, of the front of the weapon pegged on to there so they've reused that um you know again to have some difference amongst your soldiers if you've got you know you can have them with a couple of different weapons also coming with this weapon which i think is unique to this figure i don't recall seeing this one before with anyone else um yeah a little bit lacking in the in the paint department here it's just the sort of stock bronzy looking um plastic that's been cast in much like this one but again it's fine not not upset um yeah we've just seen a lot of weapons recently with a little bit of extra paint detail so obviously they've got to fit different things into different budgets and and a character that's probably going to sit not at the front of your shelf makes sense to sort of spend a little bit more budget on details for your main characters a little bit less on your sort of backgrounds um, and, and characters like this, you know, it's just a generic Pike soldier, but I really like the outfit. I, I really do. I think, I don't know. I like the, the sort of contrast between the sort of real sort of deep blue of the undersuit and the sort of maroon of the sort of over robe with the hood, the sort of molded hood on the back there. I think that looks good. There's part of me that wishes they went, when they went to live action design for the Pikes, I wish they were a little bit more extravagant as they were in the Clone Wars. They sort of had that same sort of t like layered sort of shape there to the head, but there was very much, very much different, like in terms of they were bigger, um, a bit more exaggerated. But again, that comes down to, you know, the exaggeration of the animation style. So you can call it that, but I don't know, I'd... Part of me wishes the yeah the live action interpretation was a little bit more exaggerated, just spice things up a little bit, you know, no pun intended. <laughs> but yeah, the head sculpt looks great. I like I do like the mask. I love what whoever did the custom heads with the blue face. Um, that was absolutely remarkable, and yeah, I truly believed that you were able to pop this mask off, and just because I hadn't watched any reviews of it myself. Um, so I was just like, oh, wow, this is going to be a great, great figure. And don't get me wrong, it still is, but... But, yeah, that, that's, my own un that's my own undoing. Nothing wrong with that. So, yeah, the sort of details there on the, on the back of the head are, are good. So it's sort of nice, nice sort of clean paint apps throughout the figure. It's pretty solid. The sculpt's nice. 
See what they got the sort of different sort of pattern on the outside to the inside of the hood. I think that looks good. Let me try and arm him up with this rifle here. Before I decide to just throw him around the room, you know. <laughs> So there we go, that sits in there nicely. Yeah, you got the articulation to have that multiple handed grip on the, on the gun, which is cool. Yeah, I still, I still might be inclined to get a second one of these at some point, just, you know. But for now, I'm happy with the one, honestly. We'll go through the articulation. It does have that ball jointed head up in the neck joined in the neck as well as you can see that sort of collar piece so I sort of thought that might have just been a part of the mold but that's a separate piece so little piece, little parts like that that you can you know tweak and rearrange and you know take that off repaint it and change the color scheme up a little bit if you're so inclined you can tweak your armies a little bit now let's have the ball hinge in the shoulder there is the sort of the butterfly joint. It looks more like the sort of ball and socket in there. Excuse me, just bump the camera. It's more like the sort of ball and socket with that sort of ring to allow for that extra movement. Uh, ball hinge in the elbows, ball hinges in the wrists. Let's have a joint there in the torso, which, you know, if you lift it up too far, you can kind of see the joint in there. So that's, that's probably, if we could shift that sort of skirt up a little bit to hide that. Yeah, a little bit. Still a little bit of a gap there through the middle, but that's not, not a big problem. Not for me, anyway. But yeah, good range of movement through there, if you can ignore the, the joint. Now, these legs must be used from something else. I'm not picking what it is, because there's the, uh, the double barbell joint and the swivels. There's a single joint in the knees, joint in the hin uh, hinge in the ankles and then the rocker at the foot too so if you're looking to do the uh, leg swap with Shin Hati to bring her bring her height down that might actually be a good figure to use if you want to spare spare a pike soldier you could reuse the top half of those legs for Shin and bring her height down a little bit but you know <laughs> These figures aren't cheap, you can't just use them for fodder as often as we used to be able to with other figures, but I'm pretty happy with this guy. I think he looks cool. It's nice to, like I said, spice up the shelf a little bit. That time I did intend to have pun. <laughs> you know, spice dealers. So you know what? I'm actually going to double arm this guy. He's going to be, because he's got the double trigger trigger finger there so yeah I've got a spot on the black series shelf ready for these two this one and the Tuscan chieftain which I just reviewed in my last video and check that one out appreciate you all checking out my reviews I hope you enjoyed it please give the video a thumbs up if you did subscribe if you haven't already I really appreciate it and uh, yeah, we'll catch you on some more reviews very soon. Until then, may the force be with you always.